Hello and welcome to The Three Techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang. Now tonight we'd like to talk about this program from Descript. So if you go to Descript.com, you'll see that they have this software that allows you to edit your podcast just by doing word processing, word edit. So you can delete text, you can copy, paste, drag things around. It's pretty cool. It can actually transcribe your audio files as well. It can also detect multiple speakers in the audio file and label each speaker in the transcript. Last month in July, 2020, they announced a new feature called Overdub. It's an artificial computer generated voice of your voice and it will generate text-to-speech using the sound of your voice, and it's pretty cool. There's a few reasons why you might want to do that. So the first is if you want to do a voiceover. Maybe you're doing training or creating marketing material. You could also use Overdub to create scratch tracks. So if you're working on an animation or some other piece, you could quickly type out a script and have it generate a WAV file or audio file of the actual voiceover and use it to edit and know what your timing is going to be. And the other thing you could use it for is if you yourself recorded voiceover or a podcast, but you need to go back and correct something. Maybe you said the wrong word or you had your facts wrong. So you could go back and make editorial corrections and actually type in the correct words and have it generate the correct words using your own voice. And I thought we would walk through it today. So. I've already trained my voice. I trained it for 10 minutes, and then I trained it for up to 90 minutes. Bob, did you try this out yourself too? Yes, I trained it twice, once for naught because I forgot to record. So I have 30 minutes of training. Cool, cool. And Stephen, how about you? Did you give this a try? Well, I was a little concerned about the privacy policy, so I declined. I definitely want to talk more about that, the security, privacy, and ethical concerns that are around this technology. But let's go ahead and dive in and see what we can do with this. I have a little script here, and this is the very first sentence that I typed out. And this is only after 10 minutes of training, so let me go ahead and play that for you. Hello, I'm Tony Tang. Well, actually, I'm the artificial intelligence version of Tony Tang. What did you think of that? So I, I think the basic voice is very close. It's really very impressive. I think there are some intonation differences. For example, at the end of a sentence, it's natural for the voice to go down, but it just reset your name without the voice going down. Okay. Bob, what did you think? What I liked about it was is that if you weren't there. If it was just this, I don't think I could tell the difference. It's absolutely phenomenal. I was wowed by it the first time I heard it. And then, then you did more training, right? And did you improve it? Well, I did do more training. So let's go ahead and go back and look at some of that. And this was after 90 minutes of training. So that's kind of the maximum that they recommend. Let me go ahead and play that for you. Hello? I'm Tony Tang. Well, actually, I'm the artificial intelligence version of Tony Tang. What'd you guys think of that one? If anything, for me, it was slightly worse. Again, the intonation sounded more oddly forced. The basic Tony Tang voice is amazing. It's really incredible. It needs some phrasing. When you read a piece of music, you often see a phrase mark over a sequence of notes. That, I think, is what was missing in the artificial voice. Bob, what were your thoughts on the 90-minute version of my voice for that just one sentence? Really, I think it's closer to you. There's something in it that it didn't sound quite as good in some ways. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I was a little bit frustrated that I spent 90 minutes, 80 more minutes of training, reading a <laughs> script, and that was the result I got. It actually, to my ear sounded much worse. So I'm wondering I, I, if I can go back and just submit the 10 minute worth of training data that I originally did and have it go back to that first voice, which I liked personally a whole lot better. I think that thing that you're hearing in the voice is that I would call it a warble. It's almost like you're underwater yes. in a way. So let me just play that one more time. And let's, let's just play both of those again. So again, this is the 10 minute version 
of the voice, the training voice. Hello, I'm Tony Tang. Well, actually, I'm the artificial intelligence version of Tony Tang. And Stephen, to your point, I do feel like it did go down a little bit more the second time I heard my name. Let's just hear the 90-minute version now. Hello, I'm Tony Tang. Well, actually, I'm the artificial intelligence version of Tony Tang. The, the warble is there. You sound as though you're slightly underwater. Right. And I felt like in the second one, with the 90-minute training, it almost sounded like I was answering the phone. Hello? Right? Instead of in the first one, it was more oh, like, yeah. hello. Right? With the, the downward yes. kind of tone, as you were saying, Stephen. Yes. If with 90 minutes of training, the intelligence got bored and became rebellious. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe I got tired of, because I was reading the script, right? And so maybe I was just speeding through it and the quality wasn't as good. So that's definitely something to consider ah. if you are going to train your voice that it's not necessarily quantity, I think, in my case. Maybe it was the quality of the read that helped train the voice better. Yes. So make sure you keep up that quality. What training material do you give it? It's funny you should ask, Stephen, because here is the instruction page for Descript. So what you do is you just go to the main script here and you go to the start. And you can see that at the very beginning, there is a consent. So it says, I, the owner of the voice, right? And then if you'll notice, it goes into the Wizard of Oz. This is the first 30 minutes here. Jump to the end there. But then there's a supplement one, which is another 30 minutes. And supplement two, which is another 30 minutes. So I did the main supplement and the second supplement. So I did 90 minutes worth of this. And that was how I trained it. Okay. So I assume the Wizard of Oz is out of copyright. It probably is, which is why they're able to use it. Yeah. So we just listened to one sentence. I don't think that's a fair test. Let's try something else, which something our viewers may be more familiar with. Hello and welcome to the three techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang. So that was 10 minutes of training. Let me go back and do the 90 minute training version. Hello and welcome to the three techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang. Yeah, that, that warble is back again. Did you think it was more prominent in the 90 minute version or the 10 minute version? Oh, I, di I didn't really hear it in the 10 minute, but it's certainly there in the 90 minute. It may be there in the 10 minute. It's like there's a square wave over the top of your voice. Right. I, yeah. I tend to agree with that. So I think what I'm going to try to do is go back to my 10 minute version. Now, Bob, you also trained the voice as well, right? And how long did you train it? Right. 30 minutes. What were your thoughts or impressions of your own voice? Let me play it one more time to myself here. Hello, this is Bob Fairburn's Digital Doppelganger. This is after 30 minutes of training. As I listen to it coming out of the speakers of the iMac here, I am scared <laughs> because it sounds way too much like me. If I heard that voice over the phone, I would probably think it was you. Here's where you go in Descript to train your overdub voice. So you click on overdub here on the left. You would create a new voice, which I've already created. You can have multiple styles, and we'll talk more about what that means later. But you can then train your voice. So you click here to open training, and you can open the script, which is that website that I was showing before. And this first page is just the instructions. So you don't record or train in here, but what you do is you go to the left here. And if you don't see this, click on the, the little hamburger menu there to expand that and you'll see the different compositions and you'll click on record here and that's where you record. So what you do is you just click on this record button, the microphone icon at the top. You wanna make sure that you choose the correct audio input device. And then here, if you have multiple inputs on that audio device, you can select the actual input number. The other tip I'll give you is that However you record your voice in whatever microphone or audio equipment you use is what your voice is going to sound like. If you have a vocal booth and you're a professional voiceover artist, you'll want to record your voice in there if you want that sound. 
or if you have a studio or office where you normally record your voiceovers, you want to make sure you do it in that space to retain the continuity if you want to use overdub in an editorial fashion to replace your voice. And all you do is you hit the record button and you start reading that script. Once you're done, you click stop, and then you click submit training data. Now it takes about a couple of hours up to a day to train your voice, depending on how much training material you submit. So my 10 minute training session took a couple of hours. I think it was done after two to three hours. My 90 minute training session, I didn't check it until the next day, but it was, it was done within one day. So what you're saying is that the duration of the recording you gave it was 10 minutes, but it was crunching on the data for a couple of hours before you could use it to do the text to speech in your voice. Is that right? Exactly. Yes. It is processing the recording, learning and building a model of how to mimic or generate my voice. What I found interesting was it was a miracle when when it came back. It was just, whoa, that's me. You can go ahead and edit an audio track and change a word or whatever, and it'll be in your voice. It's amazing and scary at the same time. Yeah, I think it's the scary thing that, that got me and made me decide not to do it. I could definitely see very sophisticated type of attacks using your voice, right? So if you were to receive a phone call from me and it was my voice, you probably wouldn't question whether or not it was me on the other end. And, you know, you hear about those phone scams where people are calling and saying and asking people for money because they're stuck somewhere and stranded and they're asking them to send them money so they can get back home, right? This is this takes it to the next level, right? When it's your voice, yeah, calling people you know. Yes. So there is one organization I know that allows you instead of a pin to use your voice and I have consistently declined that option. Now with this thing available, I'm even more happy that I remained using the pin. Be cautious about using any sort of voice identification now that I know this technology exists. Right. And it's text to speech, which means you can make it say anything you want. You just type the text and it's going to say that text in that person's voice. We should mention that there are security protections in place for Descript and AI voices that you create. So you're the only person who can access it. They have protection on their IT systems and encryption to prevent other people or even other people at the company from getting access to your voice and being able to use it. And although you can grant access and share your voice with other people, you currently have to email them directly to request that. It's not something that you can do through the web interface. What I'm fascinated by is the potential good use cases for this in a workflow where you're producing a lot of audio and you have editors editing text and things like that. This is a a phenomenal, a phenomenal tool. I'm blown away at how good it is. I would say that as a person who is in productions editing things, the ability to go back and quickly change a word or phrase if it was said incorrectly or if the facts were incorrect is so valuable here. It's such a powerful tool and saves a whole lot of time. The other thing that I think this opens up opportunities for is what if I want to license my voice out as a voice actor like traditional voiceover artists do? I could have my computer version of my voice generate scripts, you know, spoken words and audio upon my approval of the script and sell that without having to spend the time to go in a recording booth and record it myself. I agree. It is potentially a a great time saver if you need to edit or correct. Presumably, they just believe that when you're reading The Wizard of Oz, you end up using enough syllables, or I think the uh, the voice people 
I've heard allophones and phonemes and phenomes. I, I get confused between phonemes and phenomes, whichever it is. The one thing I haven't done yet is you can create different styles. Should we try something like that? I think that'd be cool. Do you have to use the mood in your voice when you give the training? Correct. I could do like a happy, I could do sad, I could do mad, excited. Okay, let's let's just try a sad because I found your example sort of excessively cheerful, which was another giveaway that it was artificial. Okay, sad. Let me channel my sad energy here. I have my composition open here and I'm going to use the built-in microphone. Now, again, this is, I would ideally use an external microphone to get the best quality, but I'm just going to use that because that's what I have here. And now I'm going to record a different style. Sad. Where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? So that was my sad read. <laughs> so now, so I just highlight that text. I right click, go to overdub and say, create new voice style. And then I can choose which voice this should go under. And I only have one, so I'm going to go there. And I will call this sad and create. So sad. Overdub style created. Okay. So now let's go and do hello and welcome to the three texts. I'm your host, Tony Tang, in a sad voice. So I clicked on the speaker label here. And I chose the sad style. And now it's generating that overdub voice. And you can see that it's done. So now let's play it. Hello, and welcome to the three techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang. Let's compare that to this one. Hello, and welcome to the three techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang. Really not much different. No, I could tell. You could absolutely tell. I can. But you're right. It's not dramatic. So, Tony, I think you were just insufficiently miserable. I think you're right. <laughs> the other thing to keep in mind is that it looks at the content around it, and it determines what sort of mood this is when you edit and use overdub to change the words. Let's oh. say I want to say Peter Piper picked a peck of purple pickled peppers. Okay, so I'm going to add the word purple in there. Click the plus button, and then I said insert overdub, and then it just adds this type here box. So now I'm going to type purple. And it's generating the overdub now. All right, it's done. So let's go ahead and play it and hear what we have. Peter Piper picked a peck of purple pickled peppers. Did All right, so there was definitely a difference as far as audio quality because I was using the internal mic on the MacBook there to record the original sound, but my oh, overdub voice yeah. was recorded in a vocal booth with a professional microphone. So the insert kind of stuck out, but half of that was the microphone and audio sets up. Correct. That's why it's important to record your training recordings using the same equipment and environment as where you plan on doing these editorial changes, because otherwise your overdub edits will stick out. Well, thanks guys for talking about Descript Overdub today. They have a seven-day free trial. If you go to Descript.com, uh, you can sign up for the version of Descript subscription that gives you the overdub voice that you can train and try it out for seven days. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Three Techs.